Hey guys, so it's Vicky, obviously, and uh, I wanted to do another vlog for you guys. And um, this time around, I didn't want to do like a secret book or anything like that uh, because I do have a lot of books on my TBR for May that I really do want to get to. So I didn't want to add anything extra uh, to my plate this month. And so I decided that for this vlog, I'm going to do something that I have never done but have seen so many booktubers do and I've really wanted to do it. They've usually just done it in like a normal video, but I thought I would vlog it because it would be kind of fun to vlog. And so what I'm going to be doing in this vlog is basically try a chapter, but vlog style. So there were three books that I thought would be fun to use for this try a chapter. I know a lot of times people do five, uh, but I'm just going to do three. Uh, yeah, and they are all from my May TBR, so there's no surprises here. <laughs> uh, I guess the surprise will be in which one I end up wanting to read next uh, and what I'm going to end up vlogging about. So I guess there's a, there is a little bit of a surprise element going on. Um, but the three books that I am looking or I'm going to be deciding between um, is Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay, um, The Body Lies by Joe Baker, and The House at Riverton by Kate Morton. So basically the way this is going to work is I'm going to read the first chapter from each book and then basically from there decide which one I want to read next and then I'm going to vlog it and tell you guys what I thought of the book. So it could be fun. I hope it's fun. I hope so. Okay, so first up, I think I'm going to go ahead uh, and read the first chapter of Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay. If you guys remember, this is a retelling of Jane Eyre, which sounds really fun uh, because I really enjoy the classic Jane Eyre. It's one of my favorite classics. But in this one, in the retelling, it's in modern day, I believe. And Jane is a serial killer. So that just sounds really fun. <laughs> It sounds dark and twisted, but in a fun way. Um, and so I'm, I'm ready for it. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and read this one first and then let you guys know what I thought of that first chapter. Okay, so I read the first chapter of Jane Steele. It was pretty short. It was only like 15 pages. And I didn't realize that, uh, number one, that this book is not a modern retelling. It is, I think, in like basically the same time period-ish, I think. I don't remember exactly when Jane Eyre was published. But yeah, this is like 1800s. Um, and I didn't realize that in this one, the narrator, Jane Steele, is like Jane Eyre the book is a is a thing like and she references it uh and so she's because she's kind of like oh yeah my my life is kind of like Jane Eyre's and so it's kind of meta in that way and I didn't realize it was going to do that so that's kind of cool I like it uh yeah I don't really have any complaints about this so far it is kind of like Jane Eyre <laughs> uh except you know she's already has sort of shared some of her um, dark tendencies. Uh, and it's just like Jane Eyre in that she is basically telling you her life story starting when she's a child. So here in this first chapter, she is nine years old. Uh, but she's telling you the story as an adult reflecting back. So yeah, uh, I, I like it so far. I don't know if it's going to be my pick. We'll see. Um, so, hold on, I gotta go grab the other books because I put them down somewhere. Let me go grab them. So that means I still have uh, The Body Lies and The House at Riverton left. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do The Body Lies next. And this one uh, is a psychological thriller, which I feel like it's been a minute since I've read a psychological thriller. So it is appealing to me for sure. Um, and this one is about a writer who moves to the English countryside after having a traumatic 
experience. I'm not exactly sure what that experience was. I'm assuming it was violent. She was attacked or something like that. And so she goes to the English countryside and she becomes a professor, I believe, also at a university. And she gets this student who, uh, within like his writing assignments and things that he's turning into her, uh, different pages and things, uh, his story that he, this fictional story that he's working on, it very closely mirrors her experience, this this horrible experience that she is recovering from mentally and everything. And it kind of freaks her out because she it's it's just so it hits so close to home for her. And even the main character that he writes about is a lot like her. And so it kind of starts to mess with her. Uh yeah, so that sounds really cool. <laughs> um you know, and like I said, it's been a minute since I've read a psychological thriller. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and give the first chapter of this a try and then check back in. Okay, so first thoughts on The Body Lies. I read, there was like a little prologue and then a chapter, so it ended up being about 25 pages. And I'm super intrigued. Uh, because there are these like little the book starts with this like little it's just a little like paragraph type thing um that and then there's another one of those like later on uh like the part where i just stopped and i'm super intrigued by those little paragraphs like what's going on there because they seem to be kind of separate from the rest of the story what is our main character's name do we even know her name <laughs> now that I'm like, oh, well, it's, it's told through her eyes, so I don't know. I don't know what her name is. I don't remember. Wow, that's awful. But <laughs> so yeah, this definitely has me intrigued right now. Uh, yeah, I have nothing bad to say about it, really. Uh, like I said, those little kind of in-between little things, for sure have me wondering like what's going on here so yeah I'm excited about this one I like it uh so then that means that my last one is The House at Riverton by Kate Morton and this one is a historical fiction this will be my fourth Kate Morton because I've read The Clockmaker's Daughter uh The Secret Keeper and why am I blanking? The Lake House. <laughs> there we go. And I've liked all of her books. They've all been uh, a little bit kind of slow burns and they're always a little bit longer on the longer side. They're always about 500 pages or so. Um, but I always end up really enjoying them. So like I said, it takes a little bit of time, but they always end up being good. So, so this one, uh, has to do with a woman so there's two timelines typical Kate Morton there's a timeline going on in the past and a timeline going on in present day the past story time deals with our main character Grace who uh, as a girl lived in the house at Riverton and I think her mother was a servant uh, and then she kind of so she was kind of a servant also um, and it takes place in the 1920s. And then one summer evening during a party, someone is killed. Um, and then it kind of flashes forward to the present day where Grace is an old woman. And I think these like, kind of like documentary filmmaker people <laughs> contact her because they're doing a documentary about what happened that summer. And they want her to be a part of it. Uh, so... I'm assuming she agrees and goes back to the house uh, after not being there for many years and memories are stirred up and such like that. And the point is you're trying to kind of figure out along with her like what happened. So like I said, I've always enjoyed her stories um, in that format, the back and forth in time. Um, it always just seems to wrap up so nicely and I enjoy that and and like I said in my TBR video her books kind of give me spring and early summer vibes so I feel like this is a great time to read this book so yeah I'm gonna give um, this one a try the first chapter and then I have a decision to make
so I went ahead and read two chapters of The House at Riverton because the first chapter was only like six pages. So I read two and that ended up being 16 pages, uh, which gave me, you know, a little taste of, you know, what was going on. And I have to say, I really like Grace so far in this book. Uh, she's our main character. She in the present day, which present day uh, in this book, let's see, this book was published in 2006. So, okay. Um, but anyways, she is 98 years old. So, and I like her a lot. <laughs> she seems like a cool lady. So, yeah, I'm intrigued by this one as well uh, because you kind of find out in those first two chapters that um, Grace was part of the servant group or whatever you call them um, at the Riverton house, um, but was good friends with the two daughters in the house, uh, the family that they served. They had two daughters. Um, Hannah and Emmeline and she was good friends with both of them and then you kind of get a little hint about what happened that summer night um, having to do with a poet and these two sisters and kind of like you get just like a little little hint a little taste of like what went down so yeah I'm intrigued I'm intrigued so now I have to think about which of these books I'm gonna read next they all sound good and they're all so different because you have you know like a historical fiction psychological thriller and what would, what would this be like a retelling that is like kind of satirical and funny I don't know they're all very different so which one am I gonna go with though I really like all three of these and obviously I'm still going to read all three of them this month uh, the one that grabbed me just in reading the first chapter or two um the one that grabbed me the most they had me the most intrigued was dun 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 drum roll please Brrr. the body lies by joe baker <laughs> i just like i said the the premise is just really got me and that like i said those little in-between thingy things i don't even know what to call those but i'm interested i gotta know what's going on here so Yay, this is the one I'm going to be vlogging for the rest of this video. So uh, I hope you guys stick around and come along with me. And we'll see what this thriller is all about. What's, what's the matter, Morgan? You don't like the TV? You don't like that Samsung thing bouncing around? Morgan, what's the matter? <laughs> Come here, Morgan. Come here. What's the matter? You want me to turn it off? You want me to turn it off? <laughs> this is this is what you're barking at, this thing? You don't like this? It's very unsettling, isn't it? Are you okay? Huh? Are you okay? Are we okay now? Are we okay now? Thank you for protecting me from that awful TV. Oh, what would I have done without you protecting me from that awful TV screen? Oh my gosh, you're such a protector. You're my hero. Hey, so I thought I'd give you guys an update for how The Body Lies is going. I am on page 85. Sorry if you can hear a dog barking in the background. Um, the neighbors behind us have a dog that is quite vocal. <laughs> he barks a lot. So anyways, I'm on page 85 of The Body Lies. And so far, I am definitely still intrigued with the story. But... I'm still kind of like waiting for things to start happening. Uh, what's interesting about the way the story is being told is our main character, whom I still don't think we know her name. Is that weird? Is that being done on purpose? Because now that I'm really thinking about it, I'm like, I don't think anyone's ever addressed her by her name. That's interesting. Okay. Anyway, she is coming into this university 
as like a special lecturer kind of thing uh, because she does have a published novel so she's like has a class where she's kind of like talking about novel writing so because she is doing this lecture about novel writing interspersed within the story here are pieces of writing that her people in her class have been submitting and then they kind of like they read it over and then they talk about it and so it's interesting but it also kind of feels like I'm kind of like waiting for the the main like part of the story to start happening because it hasn't quite happened yet <laughs> so it's a little bit of a slow start um, in that regard then the other kind of little like thing about this that I find that I this is just like personally I just feel like it's kind of I don't want to say odd but I just wouldn't react this way I guess is what I want to say is that um, our main character the very first part of the book she experiences something um, and she lives in London with her husband and um, and she's pregnant when this thing happens so fast forward three years the reason that she she takes this teaching position this like special lecturing position but it is um, out in the country quite a distance from London so she has to move to this place and her husband doesn't want to leave his job just yet because he I believe is also a teacher so he doesn't want to like leave in the middle of the school year or whatever or something or at the beginning of the school year he doesn't want to leave when he's already like committed to doing that school year or something so he stays back and she and her son go alone to like live in the countryside by themselves and to me I'm like after having um, something traumatic happen to you where you don't feel safe anymore my reaction would not be to go and live in the middle of nowhere by myself in a place I don't know it just seems it's just not something I would do I don't know but yeah so far like I said the writing's good I am still intrigued but I'm also kind of like wanting something to start happening right now it's very much about her teaching and like writing and the process of writing and like her students and that kind of stuff and like university life and I'm kind of like okay let's get into like the thriller stuff <laughs> so we'll see how it goes you don't like Leia's countdown calendar you, you don't you don't like it oh Morgan you don't like her countdown calendar for summer break it's different, isn't it? You said, that's not supposed to be there. I don't like it. <laughs> Let's add that to the list of things that annoy Morgan. Hey, so I just have the camera set up. I just finished filming a video, so I thought I'd give you guys an update on The Body Lies. And, okay, something just happened in this book. I'm on page 145. So like pretty much halfway through, something's just happened that I did not think was going to happen. It was very unanticipated and it's really changing the trajectory of this story. Like I now going back and looking at the blurb, I feel like the blurb is a little bit misleading because it's what's, what the blurb says is going on hasn't even happened yet in this book and we're like halfway through it and like I said it's just taken this turn and now I have no idea where it's going or like what's what's I I don't know I'm I'm a little bit confused and so yeah I think this is one of those books that the blurb doesn't quite match with what the story actually is who knows maybe time will tell in the next hundred ish pages maybe things will will take another turn I don't know but yeah right now I'm just like I'm a little bit confused and it, it seemed and, and so because of that right now it feels like the book is meandering because it's not really doing what the blurb says it's gonna do so I don't I don't know I don't know how I'm feeling about this um yeah I'm hoping it ends up blowing me away there's nothing about this right now that's really saying thriller to me so uh yeah 
I don't know guys. I don't know. I'm gonna have to keep reading and and let you know what's going on. Hey guys, sorry for the poor lighting. It is now the next day at about 9 p.m. and I haven't had a whole lot of time to read today. Uh, in fact, I just like started picking this up um, like after dinner and stuff because we were doing a lot of outside work today. Uh, cleaning out the flower beds and um, we were transplanting some of our seeds that we had started in the house. We moved them into the little our little makeshift garden thing outside and yeah it was just it was a beautiful day and we just spent a lot of time outside doing work so I didn't really get to read <laughs> but I did want to give you guys a little update a little check-in on the body lies and like I said in my last clip something has happened that has really turned the story into something different um, and I don't know there's just something about this that I just thought it was going to be something totally different going in uh, and for being a suspense novel or a thriller it's definitely not a thriller but even because um, I know like there's a difference between suspense and thriller I don't think this book is either of those I don't know it's just kind of weird um, and then I think I mentioned that she has a three-year-old son in this book and I have a three-year-old son and I can tell you that this child in this book is not like any three-year-old I know. <laughs> uh, he is just the perfect little angel. He goes to bed every night on time, he never throws tantrums, he just reads books and plays quietly and he's just a great little boy. And three-year-olds aren't like that. They're just not. So that's also been kind of just like bugging me a little bit that you know, she has this kid and he's just not realistic. Um, so yeah, and like I said, the story has definitely taken this turn where it's still interesting and obviously I have about 70 pages left and I really want, I want to know what happens. I want to know how it's going to pan out. Um, but it definitely has been, I think, lacking in suspense a little bit. Um, and I just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, guys. <laughs> I would love to be able to finish this today, but I know it's not going to happen. I'm going to climb into bed. I'm going to start reading, and I'll probably get five, ten pages in and pass out. So I'm really hoping that tomorrow I'll be able to finish. Um, but we have a busy day tomorrow, too. Uh, the kids have soccer, and then we're um, getting together with some friends after soccer uh, to, like, barbecue or whatever outside. So I don't know how much reading I'm going to get done tomorrow. Uh, so hopefully I can finish it, though, um, and wrap this up. But yeah, as of right now, I'm just feeling kind of meh about this book because it's just, I don't know. It's just wasn't what I was expecting, which isn't always bad. Sometimes that's a nice little surprise to have a book not be what you thought. Um, but this one, it's, it's just, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about it. So I guess we'll have to see how it ends. But yeah, uh, when I have more to report, I will let you guys know. Hey, so it is now Tuesday, so yeah, I have kind of sucked at vlogging <laughs> this go around because I think the last time I checked in with you guys was Saturday. So, but I did want to report that I did finish The Body Lies uh, last night while um, I was at dance with Leia waiting for her while she was in class, and I did finish it. So, it's time to wrap it up. Let's do it. Okay, so, thoughts on this book. <laughs> I think I've said this before a couple of times in this vlog, but this is definitely one of those books that I think was marketed wrong um, because to me it was a lot more literary, uh, though the ending was pretty um, intense and there was it was kind of page turning uh, with like the climax and everything of what happened. Uh, other than that, it was a very quiet book. Uh, it didn't really, it wasn't all that suspenseful, um, and there was like a twist that kind of happened at the end, towards the end, that for some reason just did nothing for me. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that this one definitely could have been marketed differently. I'm sorry if I have lines on my face. You gotta love that sunshine, look at that. Anyway, uh, so I think that the marketing and like the blurb, it's just, it didn't really go with what happened because 
I guess I thought that the incident in question in the that is mentioned in the blurb was the driving force of the rest of the novel and that's not true at all so that's all I'm gonna say about that I don't want to spoil things for people but yeah the book definitely took a turn that I wasn't expecting and though it wasn't horrible it just wasn't what I was thinking it was going to be the things that I did like about this book though uh, if you are into books that have to do with writing or um, are about writers I think you would really like this because that is a huge chunk of the book especially the like the early part of the book that's pretty much all it is because our main character is a writer and she's teaching this novel kind of this like novels uh, writing course with a group of students and they're all sharing their work so you're reading their work kind of along with them and then so it, it's it, the early part of the book is very much about the writing process and stuff so if that's something that you like I think you would like this and I think the overall writing in this book was good um, there were a lot of typos and things which I'm not going to uh, blame the author for I mean that's what editors are for like obviously they dropped the ball a little bit because there were quite a few errors in here but the writing itself was was good and without giving away too much about the plot I think that this book does handle um, assault well in the ter in terms of the idea that there is no right or wrong way to act when you are in a traumatic situation uh, in the aftermath of that situation there is no right or wrong way to act and it was it was really interesting to see how the care the main character um, interacted with other people after the fact and uh, there are some great conversations in here about that idea <laughs> I'm trying to talk around it without saying what it was um, but I really appreciated those themes I thought it was really interesting I did find our main character to be she was just one of those characters that a lot of things happened to her and she was just kind of like okay there wasn't a whole lot of emotion to her uh, I don't know there was something about her that I just didn't really connect with and you never found out her name either so all in all because of the writing and the themes addressed in this book I would give it a three star uh, but it was a little bit underwhelming in terms of going into it thinking it was a psychological suspense or psychological thriller because it really didn't get there. It didn't it didn't have those qualities until much, much later in the book. And this isn't a very long book. It's under 300 pages. And so the first part of the book, I was just like, when is this going to start? Like, when is this stuff, the, the, the psychological stuff going to start? And it took a really long time. So it was, it was slow going. And like I said, it didn't really, to me, feel very suspenseful or thrillerish. It was psychological, um, but it definitely was more of like a literary type story. And I guess that just wasn't what I was expecting going in. So yeah, this is a three star read. Um, I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. It was fine. Uh, if it sounds interesting to you, you should check it out because like I said, it does explore some interesting themes dealing with um, trauma and the after effects and how how that how victims um, process that and how they um, are viewed by others. Uh, I thought it was interesting. Um, and the writing was good. So there's that. So I'm going to put this down because my arm's getting tired. Um, so yeah, this was a fun vlog. I like the whole try a chapter thing. I definitely think I would try this again because it was fun to pick my next read that way. I've never done it before and it was fun. I really liked it. Um, so next up, in case you're curious, I am going to start The House at Riverton um, because that one is just giving me those springy sort of vibes that I'm really feeling right now so that's going to be my next one so yes let me know down below um if you've read The Body Lies and what you thought of it because uh, I would love to hear what other people thought and let me know if you would want me to do more try a chapter type of videos um even if it's not a vlog even if it's just a regular old video because I would love to get your guys's input so yes anyway that's all I have guys I'm sorry this vlog was not um I didn't vlog as much as I normally do. I, I, I don't know. It was, it was a 
a weird week. So <laughs> anyways, I hope you guys are having a great week and I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much for watching.